It's, it's Tabletop, tabletop time. time. I'm Dave. And I'm Jen. And today we are doing this really awesome project that Dave and I have had in the works for a very long time. We're testing our nail products on our miniatures. That's right. I've just put my nails on the line as we experimented with a whole bunch of different nail products to see how we could best apply them into miniature painting and hobby. Now the full video of that is up on our Patreon. We just did a live stream for about an hour and a half, two hours with our patrons. It was super cool. If you want to see more of that, check out the Patreon. But we're going to go into that show you a little bit of what we discovered and then dive into starting to make some very cool looking rubric marines. Sparkly. <laughs> Let's do it. So for this project, Dave and I decided to pick the Thousand Suns Rubik Marines. These models are absolutely stunning. There's so much detail and areas where we can put really amazing things on them. I'm so excited to be able to finally build these guys. I've been eyeing them off for a good time and I think Dave has been too. Like most Games Workshop models, these were really easy to assemble, cut and prime. I had really no problems. They're a bit pokey at times, just you gotta be a bit careful with some of the sharp pointy bits. But again, really no trouble. I decided to make a sorcerer and five extra guys. Originally we just wanted five, but I thought the sorcerer was too cool not to make. He is in such a cool dynamic pose. I thought that he'd just be the champion of this little project. As I'm building these guys, I'm slowly starting to get a picture in my head of where I want everything to go and how I want them to look. I can think of the colors that I want to use and hoping that certain things work out. Overall, this is going to be a very challenging project, but one that I'm super excited to be involved with. Alrighty, so I'm gonna introduce you into some of the products that we're gonna be using today. So, first of all, we've got our top coats. These usually go on as first as like a base layer, consider them like a primer. I've got a gloss and a matte version. I think the gloss version is gonna work the best, but I thought I'd get both just to see what we can do. One of the first products I have is this awesome chrome pen. So, it's got the pigment inside the black parts, and it's like a really fine powder that you can spread on. There's a gold and a silver in this pen, so it'd be really interesting to see what kind of techniques we can get, maybe a cool blend of both of them. We also have this really cool chrome sort of powder. It's really finely milled and the idea is that you dip your fingers into it and then dust it off and put a top coat on. And it's supposed to come out as this really nice chrome color. I don't know how well this is going to work, but I thought it would be a cool option to try. Another thing that I was super interested in was this poly gel. So this has got some iridescent flecks inside the middle of it and it's like this thick glue that comes out. Again, I don't know how well this is going to be applied on a miniature, but it looks could be deceiving. This could be a real good winner. I've got high hopes for this one. Another option is some iridescent papers. This is what we originally thought of using for our models when Dave and I were discussing this concept. It's basically these little individual sheets of paper that you'll need to cut up and put on the model individually. There's a couple of colors as well to choose from so it'll be a really good test to see if it works. This could be a really good option because I can pick and choose where I want the special flecks to actually sit on the model. And our last option is these individual iridescent flecks. I've got some turquoise kind of color and a really nice purple. Both of these are beautiful options for Zinch, so I'd be happy with either of these. I'm not sure how these are gonna work. I'm worried they're gonna stick out on the model a little too much, but hopefully with some varnish, they'll just lay down nice and flat. Now, when we're doing these kinds of exploratory painting things, it pays to have the best products on hand to do it with. That is why we're happy that today we're sponsored by Redgrass Games, who make their amazing everlasting wet palette, as well as an awesome range of magnetic and rotatable painting handles and really good brushes. Today, a wet palette was super critical. The gloss varnish we were using to make a paste with the nail foil glued onto any surface that we left it on. So having Redgrass Games everlasting wet palette to do that mixing on was vital. It was super helpful because our paints didn't dry out nearly as quickly as if they were just on a traditional palette. Now Redgrass Games' painting handle also has a magnetic bottom to assist you in making sure you don't knock over your hobby projects and my favorite personal feature on that handle is that you can turn the top around with your thumb which is super, super useful for all kinds of projects, especially airbrushing. So you can hold the painting handle in the spray booth and rotate to get an even coating on all surfaces. We also have custom tabletop time metallic metal plates that you can stick onto your mats at your hobby desks. You get an order from Redgrass Games using the code TTTRGG. And happy painting, everyone. Back to the video. So, do you know how to paint your nails? <laughs> No. No. Well, first you gotta prime it. Oh, baby, that smells like my sister's bedroom when I was like five. Yep. 
All right, so that's UV cured. That's it. So now what? So what do you want to use first? This. The poly gel. Okay. Yep. So yep, squeeze it on. Like a little, like yep. low fold. Oh! Yep, squeeze it on. Very good. Yeah, it's like more, st I thought it would be a lot smoother. Like it sticks to everything except the nail. I feel like this gel isn't meant to be this thick. What the f***? My Warhammer brain is already going like, I need, I need water. There you go. Mine's chunky as heck. Yeah, it's too chunk. So what if I put on... That looks fucking extra as sh If we could get that to stay, that looks sick. The way it actually is cracked and has texture to it on a mini. Now picture a Thousand Suns Rubrikai decked out like that. Okay, this is gonna be really hard to paint. I think we're not gonna paint a squad. I think we're gonna paint one dude, but I think it's gonna be the blingest Rubrikai ever. So bling that it might make me wanna actually do Thousand Suns. God damn it. So to start off with, we got our iridescent flakes from our nail kit and mixed them with some Vallejo gloss varnish. We made a little mixture and put this on top of the model in the areas where we thought it would look the best. This was kind of a tedious task, but I think that this is probably easier than painting in the end. Like you'd have to do a couple of layers and make it look really cool, but this kind of gave such an awesome effect with little trouble so I was okay with this process. You did have to get into the little nooks and crannies and kind of make sure that it covered everywhere but I just think it looks so stunning. It was a new process and it was something that neither of us were particularly familiar with so we each were feeling our way around how we would apply it. I found for me what worked best was just mashing or pulping up the flakes into a sort of a paste on the end of the brush and then carefully applying them. This removed a lot of the texture from the flakes themselves and allowed it to adhere to the contours of the model really smoothly. After carefully applying down all of our foiling onto all the flat surfaces on the rubricae that needed it, it was time to move on to some more of the regular base coating. We based it in a black gold from scale 75 to start off with. This was kind of a mute sort of gold, so it kind of helped with the purple and the flex and making sure it didn't stand out too much. We then highlighted the black gold with an alvin gold from scale 75. This was just to sort of make the recesses show and just give it a little bit of a pop. With the color shifting nail effect down, as well as the gold, a big thing I wanted to work out was how I actually wanted to color the rest of the model. My gut instinct pulled me towards orange. Trying out the orange, people in the studio were a little bit dubious on it. However, I still felt that it would work. But I tested out some alternatives, including a rather wild pink and blue, but for the longest time was thinking that black and orange was still the best choice. Ultimately though, I found that the black sank away and was disappearing a bit much, and it wasn't bringing attention to the detailed areas of the model. So I decided to do a traditional khaki color like papyrus scrolls or the wraps of a mummy. This color always brings your mind to Egypt. So with those core colors down, it was just the details such as the gems to finish painting. Facing the model was a must. So I mixed up some sandy light earth as well as combining some rocks and pebbles into it to give it a bit more texture. Applied it unevenly across the base. When that was dry, a wash of Agrax earth shade, followed by some dry brushes to bring it back up to a sandy yellow and then finished with some gamers grass tufts. <laughs> So I'm super happy that this worked. I honestly going into it, I was pretty sure it was going to be a flop. Like the technique mm. would just not apply onto a mini. Yeah, this is a dream that Dave and I have had for a really long time. And to see it finally realized is really exciting. I'm just thinking of all the things that we could possibly do with it. It's not quite what we originally envisaged. It's not a shattered glass or mirror effect, but the iridescent armor is just so gorgeous. And it's something that even color shift paints, they just fail to realize in the same way that the textured flakes do. Mm. I would love to 
buy a whole bunch of different products like that, but in different colors and see what I could do. Yeah. Um, so cool. Absolutely. You can get those iridescent flecks in different colors as well. So yeah, it'd be really cool to see what can happen. And it's amazing to see what you can learn by going outside the scope of your usual hobby and to try things like nail art techniques. Mm. If you guys have any suggestions for things that we should try, just mention them below in the comment and we'll have a look and maybe we try something a bit different next time. And if there is a significant amount of love on this video and you want to see it, I would love to paint a thousand suns vehicle in the same color scheme. I think that could look so amazing. And thank you once again to our sponsor, Redgrass Games. Without your paintbrushes, painting handle, and your wet palette, this project would have been a whole lot more difficult. Yeah, it was an absolute blast to use, so thank you so much, guys. And you know who else we like to thank? Who else? It's our patrons, <gasps> Don Diddly Darned It. No, look, it's almost... I, I'm still, I want to see something. I want to see a squashed aspect ratio patron scroll. <laughs> like I want to see it down here, Just like the bottom the half of the screen. We can be like, oh yeah. Sitting mm. up on top of it. Mm. Oh, look at him. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. Look, oh, oh yeah, one. that's a good one. Mm, yeah. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the one. That's it. All right. So, um, so now do you want me to go do your nails? Like we've got a ton of stuff now, so we could. Well, we do have to do the thumbnail yeah. for this video. Yeah, so. let's, should we go do that? Yeah. yeah. Let's have some fun. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> was that in? God, I hope that was in. No, I don't think it was.